My next pen cast for chapter 9 is covering the topics of notes receivable. I'll have several shorter pen casts on this topic. This first one is just some basics. So then, let's start with the basics on notes receivable. First of all, there are formal written promise to pay, unlike accounts receivable, which is more of an implied agreement. They also bear interest, which accounts receivable, if paid monthly, usually do not. And there is stronger claim of assets of another business than an accounts receivable is. If you end up having to go to court, it's much better evidence to have a formal written promise to pay with the due date than it is an accounts receivable. The next question then would be, how do they come about? Where do notes receivable come from? You can see I've noted three collection efforts, sell of merchandise, and lending activity. Let's start with collection efforts. Sometimes, as you try to collect on an accounts receivable, you're unable to do this, and so you contact someone and say, you know, why don't we move this into a notes receivable? I can give you a little more time. You can make a payment along the way. I'll be earning some interest. It'll work better. So it's a collection effort. What happens is you set up a notes receivable for the amount that you agree to carry on into the future. You credit accounts receivable and hopefully you some get some cash along the way. If you have a $10,000 accounts receivable, you can say pay half of it and I'll be happy to give you an extended period of time on the other half. So you credit accounts receivable, move it into notes receivable, and recognize any cash you might have collected as part of this effort. A second way notes receivable can come about is through the sale of merchandise. If you're selling something to someone and you know it's going to take longer for them to pay than the traditional 30 days allotted in an accounts receivable, you might very well just sell the merchandise on a notes receivable from the beginning. I'm remitting cost of goods sold with this entry. Then you have formal written promise to pay, you'll earn some interest and a stronger claim against their assets should you need it. The third way is pure lending activity. Perhaps you just want to lend someone some money, an owner perhaps a supplier, or perhaps someone you're selling merchandise to. You have a relationship with them which makes you feel comfortable in a straight-out lending arrangement. So you just lend them some cash with a promise to pay in the future. These are three ways that notes receivable can come about. One more little thought here. Where do notes receivable belong on financial statements? What is their financial statement presentation? Hold on. First, oops. Welcome back. I've corrected my misspelling, answered the phone, and I'm ready to go again. How about financial statement presentation of notes receivable? Of course, they live on the balance sheet. And of course, they're an asset. If the note that we're working with is due within a year or an operating cycle, whichever is longer, they'll be shown under current assets. We now have cash, and we have petty cash, and accounts receivable, and now we have notes receivable. This would be if it were a short-term note. They could also be under the category investments and funds if the note is going to be of a longer duration. I invite you now to look back into the classified balance sheet we learned at the end of Chapter 4 if you would like more details. But notes receivable can also live 
under investments and funds if they're longer lived. So, this concludes our basic introduction to notes receivable. Thanks for joining me. My next pincast on notes receivable will actually deal with some other issues like maturity date, maturity value calculation, and journal entries.